every skydiver should know the stalling point of their canopy. But what does that mean? Why is it important and how do you actually stall your canopy? Let's find out in this video. What's up skydivers? It's Catherine Bernier from Skydive Vibes, sharing the passion of skydiving and helping you become better and safer skydivers. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and click the little bell icon to be notified whenever we post new videos all about skydiving. Before we start, as always in the description, there's gonna be links and notes that may help at all times. So first, what does stalling your canopy mean? In fact, stalling your canopy is the action to remove all of its lift power to the point where it cannot support you anymore. At this point, you can start feeling yourself going backward and accelerate almost back into free fall. It can be scary the first time you try it out, but hopefully you're gonna experience it on purpose during a practice instead of experiencing it when it's not the time, like when you're landing. I don't know if you guys know, but since I'm an engineer, let's talk physics. First, let's talk about how a canopy flies. So you'll notice that it has this shape, which is the shape of a plane wing. And when you place it into the relative wind, the airflow will follow its shape. But as it follows its shape, the airflow on top will tend to go faster than the airflow on the bottom and this will result in less pressure on the top and more pressure on the bottom. This is how you get the lift force. Another important element to consider is the angle between the relative wind and the cord of the wing. It is called the angle of attack. And due to this angle, the airflow on the top of the wing will tend to not follow the shape of the wing until its end. So this effect actually creates drag. As you increase the angle of attack, more of the airflow on top of the wing will not follow its shape and create even more drag and reduce actually the lift of the wing to a point where it will not be able to support your weight. And even if we say that the canopy will lose its lift, we will tend to remain underneath it because in the end it's way lighter than us and so this is actually what creates the pendulum effect when we stall our canopy and we feel ourselves going backward. So as our canopy depressurizes and loses its lift, well, it falls behind us, but then our body tends to go back underneath it. So this is what creates the feeling that you go backward. But it's a good thing that we remain underneath it because then we can recuperate. Why would you want to stall your canopy? It's such a scary feeling. Well, there's two main reasons why you want to practice stalling your canopy. First, it's to know the stalling point of your canopy because then you'll be able to fly the slowest possible with all the confidence because you would know where is your stalling point. The fact that just before your stalling point, this is where your canopy speed is the slowest. So if you precisely know where your stalling point is, you'll become more confident in flying at low speed right before it. And that could help a lot during your landing or even during canopy formation. So this is why you want to practice it and this is also why when we are flying in slow flight, we never want to turn by giving more toggle on one side. Because if you're already flying near your stalling point, just giving a small input with a toggle may cause your canopy to stall. So this is why when we are talking about slow speed and this is why in your maneuver when you learn canopy flying, you are also taught to lift the opposite hand in order to create the same turn. So practice that, master that, turning with the, by lifting the opposite hand. So this way, if you master your stalling point and can turn by lifting the opposite hand, you'll be able to fly safely at the slowest speed of your canopy and that can help during your pattern and your landing. But most importantly, the second reason why is during no wind landings. I don't know about you, but I personally like when it, there's a little bit of wind when I'm landing. This way I'm slowed down by the wind and this helps me. 
but when there's no wind, we tend to land faster. So by knowing your stalling point and by being able to fly at the slowest speed possible of your canopy, you have more chance to nail your landing smoothly during a no wind day. And I think it's the time to insert a disclaimer here. Whatever you're planning to do, discuss that with a coach or an instructor in order to get advices really dedicated to you and your experience level and the canopy you're flying and the conditions on the drop zone. Before diving into how you can stall your canopy, make sure to give this video a like and comment below. Did you actually try to stall your canopy yet? So now how to do it? There's two ways really you can stall your canopy, using your toggles or your rear risers. By using your toggles, here's what your canopy will do. It will actually close two cells on each sides of the canopy and the canopy will tend to get into this shape. When you're using your rear risers, the whole back of the canopy will fold. This method can make your stall quicker and snappier, if I can say that, but it also tends to be more stable and symmetrical. So now, let's say that we want to practice stalling our canopy. First, we gotta do certain checks. Is your canopy in a proper shape and ready to do some maneuvers? Check that you are clear of any traffic in the sky. Next, check your altitude to make sure that you are above 2,500 feet. Check where you are at the moment. Are you in your fun zone area? And are you heading in the right direction to land safely? So if you're stalling your canopy with your toggles, you want to pull them down slowly, symmetrically, and look at your canopy and cells. As you approach your stalling point, you'll start to see the back of the canopy wrinkle a little bit. And when you notice this wrinkle, take note of the position of your hands because that is right before your stalling point. So this should become the limit that you got to practice yourself to know where it is in order to always be safe in slow speed canopy flight. So now we're just right before the stalling point. Let's stall the canopy completely. So as you will continue to pull on your toggles, you will start to see and feel your canopy wobble and fold on itself. And then you're gonna have this backward feeling. Do not stress, it's normal. Just keep calm during that maneuver because you have your toggles in hand. And if you're releasing them too fast or unevenly, you can end up in a worst situation. So keep calm, let yourself go back, experience that, and then slowly lift your hands back to their position symmetrically and slowly. You'll see that your canopy will actually pull on your hands, but resist it, be strong, and go slowly back to your position. Because like I said, if you go too fast, it's gonna be very snappy, it could cause some malfunctions, but also if you're unsymmetrical, you could end up in a lot of line twists. If you're stalling your canopy with your rear riser, the same steps apply where you gotta check everything to see that you're ready to do this maneuver. And then you'll pull your risers and you'll see that the stalling point using the rear risers is way sooner. So practice it and experience it and look at your canopy because it's gonna be different in terms of the shape it will have and also the sensation of going backward and recuperating as well. Next, let me give you some tips to be safe while doing it. If you wanna have a less aggressive stall or backward sensation, what you can do is reduce the speed of your canopy and let it fly at a slow pace before doing it. This way your stall will be less aggressive on the swing. Like I said already, stay strong and symmetrical while you are recuperating from a stall. Also stay symmetrical while going into the stall and coming back from the stall. It's important if you want to avoid line twists. If something happens where your canopy is not in a good shape after you're stalling, you ended up 
in a lot of line twists. Do not panic. You are a well-educated and prepared skydiver. So simply do your emergency procedures if something happens after practicing your stall. And this is why we want to make sure that we do any type of practice maneuvers above 2,500 feet, because if something goes wrong, we still have time to do our emergency procedures and deploy our reserve canopy. You'll see that the first time you experience it, it's scary but you'll get used to it as you practice and you'll become better and better in knowing your stalling point. You will then also improve your landing because of that, because you'll have more confidence to slow your canopy completely and complete your flare when it's time to touch the ground. Good, so I hope you liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if so, and make sure to subscribe not to miss any other video we post all about skydiving. If you want to watch other videos from Skydive Vibes, simply click here. And on that, keep jumping, stay safe, and blue sky.